Well, hello everyone. Uh, today we've got a little bit of a fun video for you. As of today, which is Saturday the 7th of November 2020, we are eagerly awaiting the results of the US presidential election. Um, at the moment, it looks like Biden is in front, but who knows what will happen with the remaining votes because the, the remaining states to go are you know, could go either way, basically. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, last week I stumbled across an article that talked about a particular perfume, which I will get to soon. And they were saying that that was Michelle Obama's signature perfume. And that kind of got me thinking about, oh, well, I wonder what other perfumes or what perfumes the other first ladies wore. And that just kind of led me down a bit of a rabbit hole on the internet for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> and this actually, this video is about a week, just over a week in the making, actually. Um, I don't really know, being an Australian, I don't know that much about US history and politics. And uh, so it has been a bit of an interesting read along the way. I've found out, you know, some things, which is nice to have knowledge, you know. Um, and anyway, I just thought it would be fun to talk about what I uncovered in terms of fragrances that these women wore. And just, just be aware that this is a bit of fun, okay? So uh, I'm not, uh, I haven't done any really great in-depth amount of research and I certainly have not tried to validate any of the answers that I was able to dig up in the deep dark corners of the internet. So uh, I, I have, will say though that some websites appeared to be quite legitimate because they were um, referencing museums and things like that. Uh, others, yeah, questionable, questionable data, <laughs> but I've used it anyway. Some women I wasn't able to really pull up inf any information on in terms of what they wore uh, and others, you know, I had shopping lists almost. It was, there was so much. So in any case, I'm going to dive right in and I hope you enjoy it. Now I will say too, now I do have my phone here with me just to uh, remind myself of the notes that I've taken. Uh, I will also say that I didn't do all of the first ladies because pre-1920s, 1930s, it started to get a bit hard <laughs> to, to find any information about, you know, the fragrances that they were, wore because I think, you know, obviously back then maybe that sort of stuff wasn't being reported. So in any case, uh, we will... We will do our best. So I'm starting with Eleanor Roosevelt. She was the first lady from 1933 to 1945. And I wasn't able to pull up too much information about what she liked to wear, but I did pull up an interview that said that, uh, where she said that, yes, she liked to wear perfume that wasn't too heavy, but that she also said she didn't have any particular brand that she used. But then I found another report that indicated that she did wear Muguet de Bois by Coty and Inauguration by Prince Machabelli Perfumes. In fact, it appears from what I was able to uncover that that fragrance, that, uh, that Inauguration fragrance was actually made especially for her. So the Coty fragrance, the Muguet de Bois, was actually released in 1941. And as you can imagine, featured Lilia's Valley, but it was very reported to be very green and aldehydic. Uh, it had citrus notes in the top, such as bergamot and orange. It had florals like Lily of the Valley, cyclamen, rose and jasmine. And then in the base, there was musk and sandalwood, according to Fragrantica. So um, quite a, what I would imagine to be a fairly fresh floral, uh, fairly light and clean smelling. Um, in any case, I wasn't able to find out any more information about this inauguration perfume by Prince Machabelli, but I don't know what it smelled like. So I can't share that with you, unfortunately. But if you do know, if anyone does know, please uh, comment below and let me know because I'm kind of interested in this now. <laughs> okay, so the next first lady was Bess Truman, wife of Harry Truman, obviously, uh, from 1945 to 1953. I couldn't really find out that much about Bess Truman, at least not in terms of her fashion tastes. Um, she was a very private person and she avoided the public eye as much as possible. 
And so I was able to find out that she wore, she reportedly wore Chanel number no. five and Le Bleu by Guerlain. And judging by what I've read about her character and her, you know, desire to be out of the spotlight, um, I would say that it, at the very least, the Le Bleu was probably a good representation of her character because it is kind of a, um, it's a very nice fragrance, but it's kind of an understated fragrance and very sophisticated. So whether it's true or not that she wore it, I think that that would be a good choice for her. So the next first lady to step into the role was Mamie Eisenhower. She was the first lady from 1953 to 1961 and a woman after my own heart. She was said to have loved perfume and had a whole cupboard full of it. <laughs> and I have to say, as I was reading about her and her perfume, I, I did daydream about you know, being able to trawl through her closet of vintage perfumes and, you know, what an amazing experience that would be. So amongst the ones that she liked to wear were Fleur d'Elle de, um, and Parfums de Nicolas Odalisque. So again, I am a Parfums de Nicolas fan, or actually, I think they're just called Nicolas Parfums now, but in any case, I, that's a house, one of my favorite houses as well. So uh, I kind of feel like I, I have an affinity with her now. <laughs> we have something in common. Although I did note that the website that I got that information from seemed a little bit questionable because I think on the website they referred to her as being the president. Hello, Poppy. Poppy interruption. Okay, where were we? Uh, we just did Mamie Eisenhower. The next first lady is Jacqueline Kennedy from 1961 to 1963. Obviously, a style icon, uh, lots of reports on things that she liked to wear, both clothing wise and perfume wise. Uh, and it's fairly, it was fairly consistently reported that her favorite fragrances were Joy by Jean Pateau and Jiki by Guerlain. Uh, so I have spoken about Joy previously on this channel, not so favorably, uh, just because it's a very, floral fragrance it's heavily floral fragrance and uh, I, I just found it to be a little bit too much for me but it's widely loved so uh, I, you know don't take my comments on the fragrance as an indication of whether it's good or not I have heard that people say that the vintage version is way better than the current version haven't smelled the vintage version uh, but in any case it, it I can appreciate it but just wasn't something that I would wear personally but I do like her choice of Jiki because that is an amazing fragrance I don't own that one actually but I have contemplated buying it many many times it's kind of like the same story of the Le Bleu because I took ages to buy that even uh, and I only have the EDT of that because strangely I can't get the EDP here uh, very easily so uh, but in any case uh, Jiki is a great fragrance it's kind of a, it's a very citrusy, aromatic, uh, woody kind of fragrance and it's very light and I don't know, it, it's an amazing fragrance and it, it changes as you wear it. Uh, I can't really say much more than that because it's been a while since I've tested it in store but I do recall that every time I go in there I sort of think I really need to get that but um, I always end up buying something else. <laughs> the next First lady was Lady Bird Johnson. Love that name. Isn't that a great name? Uh, she was the first lady from 1963 to 1969. Wasn't able to find out very much about what fragrance she wore. Uh, most of the articles I read about her really focused on her love of wildflowers. She was an avid environmentalist. So I guess on that basis, I might say she might wear something earthy and floral. Um, and I'd also like to think, given that she was an environmentalist, that she would choose something that was made from ingredients that 
were sourced sustainably or something like that, but maybe I'm just reading too much into it now. Um, she was quoted as many times as having said, uh, where flowers bloom, so does hope. So suffice to say, I hope there's lots of flowers blooming in the US right now. The next first lady in line was Patricia Nixon. She was the first lady from 1969 through to 1974 and she was colloquially known as Pat Nixon. Um, she also wore Le Bleu, but then I did find another article that quoted her favourites as being Cartier's So Pretty, Shalimar and Samsara. I don't know which one's accurate, maybe they all are, maybe she wore all of them. Um, but either way, she had good taste. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the Cartier fragrance, uh, but I'm obviously quite familiar with the other ones, um, being the classics that they are, and I do have them all in my collection. So uh, I, I'm, I've been a long time lover of Samsara. Uh, Shalimar, I've developed a love for over the last probably decade or so and uh, Le Bleu, which is a recent, again, recent addition to my collection. Quite different fragrances though, really, but I mean, I like all those different fragrances, so that, why couldn't she like a wide range of fragrances? So given that I have talked about all of those, all of Le Bleu, Samsara and Shalimar many times on, my, on this channel, I figured I would zoom in on the Cartier So Pretty because I'm not familiar with that one. And so I did go and look it up on Fragrantica and I have it up on my phone now. Um, is anyone else not loving this Fragrantica layout, this new website layout? It's just, I don't know. I just feel like I can't work it out. So So Pretty was launched in 1995. Well, I guess that already rules out So Pretty as being an accurate, uh, you know what it is. So she wouldn't have worn this as a first lady, obviously, because this was the fragrance was made in 1995. But the article I read where, she, where it was quoted that she wore it was actually a, a more recent article that would explain why they've quoted a fragrance that was made in 1995. <laughs> uh, but in any case, I'm going to talk about it because, uh, you know, we're, we're going down this path now. We've started it, so may as well finish it. So the top notes are blackberry, neroli, peach, bergamot, and mandarin. The middle notes are rose, iris, orris, orchid, lily of the valley, and jasmine. And then the base notes are oak moss, sandalwood, vetiver, vetiver. Why can't I say vetiver? Vetiver. <laughs> Musk, benzoin, and cedar. I actually quite like the sound of that. I'll have maybe I should go try and track it down. I wonder if it's still available. Is it discontinued? I don't know. Um, let me know if you have tried it and if you liked it. But I'm not going to read the reviews because, I mean, obviously, that's not what we're here for. Stay on track, Cherie. Stay on track. Okay. The next first lady in line was Betty Ford from 1974 through to 1977. Again, wasn't able to find out much about her, but I did find a throwaway comment in an article somewhere that said that she uh, had, uh, that she was known for wearing Florence Gunnison perfume oils. Now, this is interesting because I've heard the name Florence Gunnison, but I don't, think I've ever heard of the actual perfume oils. So I, I don't know, I, I have no familiarity with them at all, but I don't know why it is that I've heard of the name Florence Gunnison. Anyway, you know, they must have been very famous perfume oils or something and that the, the name is just, you know, familiar to me, but I've never experienced them, I've never seen them. Uh, so I don't even know if they're still available. Okay, uh, next, First lady was Rosalind Carter, 1971 to 1981. So just a little side fact, I was born in this era. <laughs> I couldn't find much on Rosalind Carter either, actually. Other than there was a couple of websites that mentioned that she was a client of Albert Nippon and there was a fragrance or a couple of fragrances that he released. He was, he was actually a clothing designer uh, and 
so I, I, I expect that if she was a client of his, it probably would have been in relation to the clothing, not the perfume. But who knows, maybe she did, did wear the perfume as well. So she came from a religious sort of rural background and um, as a consequence, she was very conservative as well, I believe, from what I've read. And her fashion tastes represented that. So I imagine if she did wear fragrance, which she probably did, um, that it would have been equally frugal and conservative as her fashion choices were. So the next one in line was Nancy Reagan from 1981 to 1989. She was actually originally an actress, which I did not know beforehand, before doing this research. Uh, but now that I have read that, uh, I, I guess it makes sense because she did always look very put together and she did look like a Hollywood starlet in a way. <laughs> so that makes sense. Um, she was known to have very lavish style, which also, I guess, links in with the whole Hollywood lifestyle. And as a consequence, I guess it's not surprising that she also had a love of very lush white floral fragrances. So amongst her favourites uh, include Giorgio Beverly Hills, which is also, I think I've mentioned that in one of my previous videos as well. and. That is a fragrance that I always wanted to own for a really long time uh, because I loved it, but I never owned it. And um, I sort of wanted, really, really wanted it in my late teens, early twenties, I think. And now I'm sort of past it. I don't really want to own it. And I think it's changed anyway. The formulation's changed. Um, then Galanos was another one that she liked. And I'm just looking up what that one smells like because I'm not familiar with that one. That actually was released in 1979 and it's, it's, a floral, it's a floral fragrance that's also quite aromatic apparently. She also liked Madeleine de Madeleine, which I think, if I remember from my reading, is largely a white floral fragrance as well. And then she also, in a different article, I read that she also liked Tuberose by Mary Chess. Again, not one that I'm familiar with, but obviously a big fan of white florals because I think white florals feature in most of those fragrances or are the star of most of those fragrances. So the next first lady was Barbara Bush uh, from 1989 to 1993. Now she was another first lady that was a bit older when she stepped into the role. I think uh, she was in her 60s when George Bush was elected. Although the Trumans, I think, still remain the oldest couple to have ever occupied the White House. But uh, she was known to be very frugal. She was famously reported as wearing $29 shoes and fake pearls to George Bush's inauguration. Um, which, I don't see what the problem is with that, <laughs> quite frankly. <laughs> why, why does being in a powerful position require you to spend lots of money on things I don't I don't understand but anyway so I, I quite like her for that actually um, and her fragrance choices were also fairly frugal from what I've read so her favorites were reportedly uh, Evian white shoulders perfume which I did look that up and it looks like it's still fairly readily available and around about the $30 mark uh, Paco Rabanne's Calandre Maitland Philippe Zerolia, don't know that one at all. And she, but she also, in more recent times, was quite partial to Creed's Love in White. And um, I mean, she sadly passed away a couple of years ago, but um, you know, we could forgive her that little luxury, uh, despite her otherwise very frugal lifestyle. Um, and also, George Bush was also known to wear Royal Oud by Creed, which is a very, very good fragrance. And I, you know, I don't really go for many of the Creed fragrances, but that Royal Oud just smells amazing. Moving on, Hillary Clinton from 1993 to 2001 as First Lady. It was reported she liked Angel, which we all know, we all know Angel. 
But she also liked a fragrance called Bijan, and that is an oriental floral fragrance that was launched in 1986. So she obviously liked the big, bold 1980s, 1990s type fragrances. Um, and it's largely a white floral fragrance. So there's uh, orange blossom, um, tuberose, jasmine, lily of the valley, um, then some musks and woods and oak moss and stuff in the base. It's actually quite a long list of notes uh, in that fragrance. I can kind of imagine what it would smell like actually. And uh, they're the only two that I could find on record that she apparently likes to wear. So and I'm sure it's changed many times over the years as it does for all of us. So the next one is Laura Bush from 2001 to 2009. Uh, she also wore Love in White by Creed. In fact, the first bottle of that fragrance was gifted to her in 2005 when it launched. And she was also known to wear White Linen by Estee Lauder. So actually, got a similar taste to me. I loved White Linen by Estee Lauder and I have been toying with the idea of getting another one. So um, quite different fragrances though. Love in White is a very breezy white floral fragrance, um, very feminine, very pretty. Uh, white linen is, you know, aldehydic, so, and a bit sharper, a bit soapier as well. So very nice fragrances. Then we come to Michelle Obama, which I'm pretty sure everyone knows that she was obviously the first lady from 2009 to 2017. And she also wore Love in White by Creed. Uh, she was also known to wear Aqua Florentina by Creed. Uh, I'm not familiar with that one, actually. And um, yeah, but she obviously likes the Creed fragrances. But I remember reading consistently over the years that Love in White was her, her signature fragrance. So again, uh, very much a love for by the First Ladies. Okay, so... I'm just racing through these now. I'm not going to say too much about Michelle Obama because she's fairly recent. I think most of us know about her. Um, Melania Trump, currently in the role of First Lady as of tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Um, it's a mystery. But I did read that I think somebody did write a biography for her and it was quoted that um, the press would get a two minute warning when she was approaching because her fragrance would project so far in front of her. So they could smell her coming basically. Um, and her fragrance was described as having savory notes, blending jasmine and lily with oolong tea and cinnamon. So sounds like a spicy tea fragrance with some bold white florals in there. Uh, Maybe it's a little bit aromatic as well. Um, I'm trying, I've been trying to guess what the fragrance would be based on that note listing, but I mean, I don't know if, you, if, if it's an accurate note listing. So uh, if anyone else knows, let me know. But I mean, it's, it's, it's purported to be a very well-kept secret as to what fragrance she wears. So because we don't know Melania's fragrance and because, you know, her role as first lady is currently hanging in in the balance of whether or not Trump wins this election or not. And then of course there's Jill Biden who might be stepping into the role and we don't know much about her either. I thought I'd do a little bit of research to try and get an impression or a feel for what I think these women might be like and then I'll send them out of my own collection based on that. It's just a bit of fun. So Melania Trump is actually extremely private. She does try her very best to stay out of the limelight, even though she's a stunningly beautiful woman. So it's a bit hard for her to stay out of the limelight, but she really doesn't divulge much about her personal life at all, um, where possible. And she's also sort of criticized for not smiling enough, which I think is probably just a cultural thing. Uh, but I'm accused of that as well on a regular basis. So <laughs> I'm with you, Melania, I get it. Uh, I take her to be a very strong woman. I'm oh, actually, all of these women must have been strong women, but I take her to be a strong woman, uh, a very shrewd businesswoman. I think she would also be quite ruthless as well at times, but also fair. And 
I so I think and she's obviously very sophisticated as well she appears um, she also dresses very well she's always presented herself very well and you know impeccably so I picked two fragrances for her so one I sort of picked based on the description that I had of the fragrance that apparently she wears um, and for that reason I chose uh, Tion Reintel's Rococo. This is a very bold white floral. Uh, it, it also feels a little bit aromatic at times um, or, or, or herbal or something. It's a very vintagey type of fragrance and it's also kind of spicy as well. And I think based on that description that we had of her fragrance, I thought this is probably the closest thing I had to that because I don't normally go for those really bold white florals that, you know, that yell. <laughs> um, and I don't think this yells, but it is very, it, you can smell it uh, when you spray it on. It is quite strong. Um, so I, I think this is a fantastic fragrance. It's very sophisticated. Uh, it's very complicated. Yeah, so that was my first one that I picked for her. Uh, the next one I picked is, uh, is Gucci um, Eau de Parfum, which is now discontinued, of course. Uh, I did a big review on this a while ago. I'll link it at the top. But I picked this because this is a very sophisticated fragrance and it's also very sultry so um, I you know I, I imagine Melania is a, can be you know a very sexy lady so um, <laughs> I don't want to say it I don't want to say it but I think when I reviewed this I was talking about it would be it, it transitions really well from day to night and it would be worn by a type of woman who would be a boss at work and a boss in the bedroom or something like that but anyway um sorry Melania but I, I that's kind of why I immediately sort of was drawn to this as a fragrance that I would pick for her to wear because it's very bold as well anyway wonderful fragrance all right so that <laughs> that's Melania Melania Trump uh now to send Jill Biden, right. So in order to do this, I had to sort of try and learn about her because I don't really know much about her. Um, you know, I, I had never really appreciated, I guess, how long Joe Biden has been in the Senate. It's been about 40 years or something. I mean, it's, that's just, it's a really long time um, to be a politician. So kudos to him for sticking it out for that long. So what did I learn about Jill? So I couldn't find anything about what she reportedly wears. But I found this really great uh, Vogue article early, from earlier this year, back in March, uh, just around the time when it was announced that he was going to be running for president. And um, it was a really great article, actually. It gave me a lot of information about her. Uh, she's definitely no slouch from an education perspective. She's got four degrees and a doctorate. Uh, she teaches writing or lectures writing, um, I think at the university level, uh, and she's a writer herself. Um, she is reportedly, you know, a very approachable, very warm um, and friendly. So a, a bit of a contrast to Melania, I guess, in that she's not as standoffish, perhaps, uh, or not, a re not as reserved. Um, having said that, she's obviously been in this game a lot longer. Uh, you know, if her husband's been in, the, in, the, in politics for 40 years, they haven't been married for that entire time, of course. But um, yeah, I, look, I got the impression that she's a really smart, lovely lady. So... I kind of got the impression, I mean, she's she's just got this look about her, you know, she's very Californian looking. And I know that sounds bad because I'm Australian and I don't, but I just have these stereotypical views of what people look like and where they come from in the US. So I'm really sorry about that. It's not, it's just, it's just how I 
categorize things I guess and anyway so she's blonde and tanned and I just imagine that she would be from California and I think the article that I read she it was being uh, interviewed she was being interviewed in her beach house so <laughs> um, so I kind of I guess that's where I get that uh, view of her from so I actually don't know where that's one thing I didn't look up actually was where she was born but anyway that's beside the point so I guess I imagine that she would wear and I having sort of seen some photos of her style and things like that so I imagined that she would wear something very approachable uh, and not too in your face not too bold but something breezy and airy maybe a little bit floral maybe a little bit musky uh, clean smelling kind of fragrance and so I chose Mojave Ghost as uh, one that I thought would be good for her. Uh, this is a really beautiful florally woody kind of musky fragrance. Ambrette, magnolia, violet, sandalwood oh, and cedar. I love this fragrance. Um, I waited a long time to get this bottle in my in my collection. I'm really looking forward to wearing it over summer. Uh, so that was the first one that I chose for her. Um, the other fragrance that I chose, I chose because of that element of her being a writer. Um, and again, I'm going with stereotypes here, but I kind of imagine writers to be uh, fairly introverted, to be, which is not true, by the way. I mean, that's, that's not a rule, <laughs> but it's just... When I think about writing, I think about sitting quietly. I'm probably thinking about myself, actually, because I'm not actually a writer, but I've always wanted to be a writer. <laughs> but in any case, I, uh, I, I chose Sandalwood Temple uh, as the other fragrance that she might wear because this is a really beautiful, sweet, sandalwoody fragrance. It's just it's so calm and inviting and warm and approachable I can't imagine anyone wearing this and not being an approachable person because of it it's just so beautiful I love this fragrance uh, so that was the second one that I chose for Jill Biden so it will be very interesting to see what happens tomorrow when I wake up and see the results. Uh, hopefully we have a result by tomorrow. So I'm curious to know what you would choose as scents for Jill Biden and Melania Trump. Uh, just as a bit of fun, so do put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I know it was pretty long. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long once I cut it down. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Bye. We were young and we were free and running. Never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling.